Hi everyone, welcome to theCUBE's special presentation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got two great guests, one for calling in from Germany, or videoing in from Germany, one from Maryland. We've got VMware and AWS. This is the customer successes with VMware Cloud on AWS Showcase, accelerating business transformation uh, here in the Showcase. We've got Samir Kadu, worldwide VMware Strategic Alliance Solution Architect Leader with AWS. Samir, great to have you. And Daniel you. Reithmeyer, Principal Architect global AWS synergy at VMware. Guys, you guys are working together. You're the key players in this relationship as it rolls out and continues to grow. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, greatly appreciate it. Great to have um, you guys both on. As you know, we've been covering this since 2016 when Pat Gelsing, then CEO, and then, then CEO AWS at Andy Jassy did this. It kind of got people by surprise, but it really kind of cleaned out the positioning in the enterprise for the success of VM workloads in the cloud. VMware's had great success with it since, and you guys have a great partnership. So this has been like a really strategic, successful partnership. Where are we right now? You know, years later, we got this whole inflection point coming. You're starting to see, you know, this idea of higher level services, more performance are coming in at the infrastructure side, more automation, more serverless. I mean, it, and A, I mean, it's just getting better and better every year in the cloud, kind of a whole nother level. Where are we, Samir? Let's start with you on, on the relationship. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, there's several things to keep in mind, right? So in 2016, right? That's when the partnership between AWS and VMware was announced. And then less than a year later, that's when we officially launched VMware Cloud on AWS. Years later, we've been driving innovation, working with our customers, jointly engineering this between AWS and VMware, day in, day out, as far as advancing VMware Cloud on AWS. You know, even if you look at the innovation that takes place with the solution, things have modernized, things have changed, there's been advancements. You know, whether it's security focus, whether it's platform focus, whether it's networking focus, there's been modifications along the way, even storage, right, more recently. One of the things to keep in mind is we're looking to deliver value to our customers together. These are our joint customers. So there's hundreds of VMware and AWS engineers working together on this solution. And then factor in even our sales teams, right? We have VMware and AWS sales teams interacting with each other on a constant daily basis. We're working together with our customers at the end of the day too. Then we're looking to even offer and develop jointly engineered solutions specific to VMware Cloud on AWS and even with VMware's other platforms as well. Then the other thing comes down to is where we have dedicated teams around this at both AWS and VMware. So even from solutions architects, even to our sales specialists, even to our account teams, even to specific engineering teams within the organizations. They all come together to drive this innovation forward with VMware Cloud on AWS and the jointly engineered solution partnership as well. And then I think one of the key things to keep in mind comes down to, we have nearly 600 channel partners that have achieved VMware Cloud on AWS service competency. So think about it from the standpoint, there's 300 certified or validated technology solutions they're now available to our customers. So that's even innovation right off the top as well. Great stuff, Daniel. I want to get to you in a second upon this principal architect position you have. In your title, you're the global it was synergy person. Synergy means bringing things together, making it work. Take us through the architecture because we heard um, a lot of folks at VMware Explore this year, formerly VMworld, talking about how the, the workloads on IT has been completely transforming into cloud and hybrid, right? This is where the action is. Where are you, is your customers uh, taking advantage of that new shift? You got AI ops, you got IT ops changing a lot. You got a lot more automation, edges right around the corner. This is like a complete transformation from where we were just five years ago. What's your thoughts on the relationship? So um, at, at first I would like to emphasize that our collaboration is not just uh, that we have dedicated teams to help our customers get the most and the best benefits out of VMware Cloud and AWS. We are also enabling us mutually. So AWS learns from us about the VMware technology where VMware people learn about the AWS technology. Uh, we are also enabling our channel partners and we are working together on customer projects. So we have regular assembles globally and also virtually on Slack and uh, the usual suspect tools uh, working together and uh, listening to customers. That's, that's very important. 
um, asking our customers where are their needs and we are driving the solution into the direction that our customers uh, get the, the best benefits out of VMware Cloud on AWS. And over the time, we really have involved the solution. As Samir mentioned, we just added additional storage solutions uh, mm -hmm. to VMware Cloud on AWS. We now have three different instance types that cover a broad range of, of workloads. So for example, we just added the i4 iHost, which is uh, ideally for workloads that require a lot of CPU power, such as you mentioned it, AI workloads. Yeah, so I want to guess just specifically on the customer journey and their transformation. You know, we've been reporting on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE in the past couple of weeks in a big way that the ops teams are now the new devs. <laughs> I mean, that sounds <laughs> a little bit weird, but operation, IT operations is now part of a lot more data ops, security, writing code, composing, you know, with open source, a lot of great things are changing. Can you share specifically what customers are looking for when you say, as you guys come in and assess their needs, what are they doing? What are some of the things that they're doing with yeah. uh, VMware on AWS specifically? It's a little bit different. Can you share some of the yeah. highlights there? That, that's a great point. Um, because um, originally VMware and AWS came from very different directions when it comes to speaking people at customers. So for example, AWS very developer focused whereas VMware has uh, a very great footprint in uh, the IT ops area. And uh, usually these are very different, uh, uh, very different teams, groups, different cultures, but it's, it's getting together. Um, however, uh, we always try to address the customer needs, right? There are customers that want to build up a new application from the scratch and build resiliency, availability, recoverability, scalability into the application. Um, but there are still a lot of customers that say, well, we don't have all of the skills to redevelop everything, to refactor an application, uh, to make it uh, highly available. So we want to have all of that as a service, recoverability as a service, scalability as a service. We want to have this from the infrastructure. That was yeah. um, one of the uh, uh, unique selling points for VMware on-premise. And now we are bringing this into the cloud. Samir, talk about your perspective. I want to get your thoughts and not to yeah. take a tangent, but we had covered the AWS Remars, of, actually it was Amazon Remars, machine learning, mm -hmm. automation, um, robotics and space. It was really kind of the confluence of industrial IoT, software, physical. And so you know, when you look at like the IT operations piece becoming more software, you're seeing things about automation, but the skill gap is huge. So you're seeing low right. code, no code, automation, you know, hey Alexa, deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's coming, right? So we're seeing this kind of operating automation meets higher level services meets workloads. Can you unpack that and share your opinion on, on what you see there from an Amazon perspective and how it relates to this? Yeah, it, totally, right? And, and you know, look at it from the point of view where we said this is a jointly engineered solution, but it's not migrating to one option or the other option, right? It's more or less together. So even with VMware Cloud on AWS, yes, it is utilizing AWS infrastructure, but your environment is connected to that AWS VPC in your AWS account. So if you want to leverage any of the native AWS services, so any of the 200 plus AWS services, you have that option to do so. So that's going to give you that power to do certain things such as, for example, like how you mentioned with IoT, even with utilizing Alexa, or if there's any other service that you want to utilize, that's the joining point between both of the offerings right off the top. So with digital transformation, right, you have to think about where it's not just about the technology, right? There's also where you want to drive growth in the underlying technology, even in your business. Leaders are looking to reinvent their business. They're looking to take different steps as far as pursuing a new strategy. Maybe it's a process. Maybe it's with the people, the culture, like how you said before, where people are coming in from a different background, right? They may not be used to the cloud. They may not be used to AWS services, but now you have that capability to mesh them together. Can, then can, also, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Finish, finish your thought. No, no, I was going to say what it also comes down to is you need to think about the operating model too, where it is a shift, right? Especially for that vSphere admin that's used to their on premises environment. Now with VMware Cloud on AWS, you have that ability to leverage the cloud, but 
the investment that you made in certain things as far as automation, even with monitoring, even with logging, yeah. you still have that methodology where you can utilize that in VMware Cloud on AWS too. Daniel, I want to get your thoughts on this because at, at Explore and, and, and after the event, now as we prep for KubeCon and reInvent coming up, the big AWS show, I had a couple conversations with a lot of the VMware customers and operators, and it's like hundreds of thousands of, 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 of users and millions of people talking about and, and peaked on VMware, interested in VMware. The common thread was one, one, one person said, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put my career in the next 10 to 15 years. And they've been very comfortable with VMware in the past, very loyal. And they're kind of talking about, I'm going to be the next cloud, but there's no like role yet. Architects, is it solution architect, SRE? So you're starting to see the psychology of the operators who now are going to try to make these career decisions. Like, how, what am I going to work on? And, it's, and that was kind of fuzzy, but I want to get your thoughts. How would you talk to that persona about the future of VMware on say cloud, for instance? What should they be thinking about? What's the opportunity and what's going to happen? So digital transformation definitely is a huge change for many organizations and uh, leaders are perfectly aware of what that means. And that also means in, in to, to some extent, concerns with your existing employees. Uh, concerns about, do I have to relearn everything? Uh, do I have to uh, acquire new skills and, and trainings? Is everything worthless? I learned over the last, 15 years of my career. And the answer is um, to make digital transformation a success, we need not just to talk about technology, but also about process, people, and culture. And this is where VMware really can help because if you are applying VMware Cloud on, a, uh, on AWS um, to your infrastructure, to your existing on-premise infrastructure, you do not need to change many things. You can use the same tools and skills. You can manage your virtual machines as you did in your on-premise environment. You can use the same managing and monitoring tools. If you have written, and many customers did this, if you have developed hundreds of, of scripts that automate tasks, and if you know how to troubleshoot things, um, then you can use all of that in VMware Cloud on AWS, and that uh, gives not just leaders, but but also the architects at customers, the operators at customers, uh, the confidence in, in such a complex project. The consistency, very key point, gives them the confidence to exactly. go. And, and then now that once they're confident, they can start committing themselves to new things. Samir, your reaction to this, because you know, on your side, yeah. you've got higher level services, you've got more performance at the hardware level. I mean, a lot of <laughs> improvements. So, okay, nothing's changed. I can still run my job. Now I got goodness on the other side. What's the upside? What's in it for the, for the, for the customer there? Yeah, so I think what it comes down to is they've already been so used to or entrenched with that VMware admin mentality, right? But now extending that to the cloud, that's where now you have that bridge between VMware Cloud on AWS to bridge that VMware knowledge with that AWS knowledge. So I will look at it from the point of view where now one has that capability and that ability to just learn about the cloud. But if they're comfortable with certain aspects, no one's saying you have to change anything. You can still leverage that, right? But now if you want to utilize any other AWS service in conjunction with that VM that resides maybe on-premises or even in VMware Cloud on AWS, you have that option to do so. So think about it where you have that ability to be someone who's curious and wants to learn. And then if you want to expand on the skills, you certainly have that capability to do so. Great stuff, I love, love that. Now that we're peeking behind the curtain here, I'd love to have you guys explain, because people want to know what goes on in, uh, behind the scenes. How does innovation get happen? How does it happen with the relationship? Can you take us through a day in the life of kind of what goes on to make innovation happen with the joint partnership? You guys just have a Zoom meeting? Do you guys fly out, you write code, do you ship thing? I mean, I'm making it up, but you get the idea. What's the, what's, how does it work? What's going on behind the scenes? So we hope to get uh, more frequently together in person, but of course uh, we had some difficulties over the last two to three years. So we are very used to Zoom conferences and, and Slack meetings. Um, uh, you always, uh, always have to have uh, the time difference in mind if you're working globally together. Uh, but what we try, for example, we have regu regular assembles uh, now also in person. 
um, uh, geo-based, so for EMEA, for the Americas, for APJ, uh, and we are bringing up interesting uh, customer situations, uh, architectural bits and pieces together. We are discussing it um, always uh, to share uh, and to contribute to our community. What's interesting, you know, as, a, as events are coming back, Samir, before you get you weigh in yeah. on this, I'll, I'll comment as the Cube's been going back out to events, we're hearing comments like, what, what pandemic? We were more productive in the pandemic. I mean, developers know how to work remotely and they've been on all the tools there, but then they get in person, they're happy to see people, but there's no one's, no one's really missed the beat. I mean, it seems to be very productive, uh, you know, workflow, not a lot of disruptions, more, if anything, productivity gains. Agreed, right? I think one of the key things to keep in mind is, you know, even if you look at AWS's and even Amazon's leadership principles, right? Customer obsession. That's key. VMware is carrying that forward as well, where we are working with our customers, like how Daniel said earlier, right? We might have meetings at different time zones. Maybe it's in person, maybe it's virtual, but together we're working to listen to our customers. You know, we're taking and capturing that feedback to drive innovation in VMware Cloud on AWS as well. But one of the key things to keep in mind is, yes, there been there has been the pandemic. We might have been disconnected to a certain extent, but together through technology, we've been able to still communicate, work with our customers, even with VMware in between with AWS and whatnot, we had that flexibility to innovate and continue that innovation. So even if you look at it from the point of view, right? VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts, that was something that customers have been asking for. We've been able to leverage the feedback and then continue to drive innovation even around VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts. So even with the on-premises environment, if you're looking to handle maybe data sovereignty or compliance needs, maybe you have low latency requirements. That's where certain advancements come into play, right? So the key thing is always to maintain that communication track. In our last segment we did uh, here on, the, on this showcase, we listed the accomplishments and they were pretty significant. I mean, GEO, you get the global rollouts of the relationship. It's just really been interesting and, and people can reference that, we won't get into it here. But I will ask um, you guys to comment on, as you guys continue to evolve the relationship, what's in it for the customer? What can they expect next? Because again, I think right now we're in, at a, an inflection point more than ever. What can people expect from the relationship and what's coming up with reInvent? Can you share a little bit of kind of what's coming down the pike? So uh, one of the most important things uh, we have announced this year and we will continue to evolve uh, into that direction is um, independent scale of storage. That absolutely was one of the most important items customer asked uh, us for uh, over the last years. Um, whenever, whenever you are requiring additional storage to host your virtual machines, you usually in VMware Cloud on AWS, you have to add additional nodes. Now we have three different node types with different ratios of compute storage and memory. But if you only require additional storage, you always have to get also additional compute and memory and you have to pay for it. And now with two solutions, which offer choice for the customers like um, um, FSX for NetApp ONTAP and uh, VMware Cloud Flex Storage, you now have two cost-effective um, opportunities to add storage to your virtual machines. And that offers opportunities for other instance types, maybe that don't have local storage. We are also very, very keen looking forward to uh, announcements, exciting announcements at the upcoming events. Samir, what's your what's your reaction take on the on what's coming down on your side? Yeah, I think one of the key things to keep in mind is you know we're looking to help our customers be agile and even scale with their needs, right? So with VMware Cloud on AWS, that's one of the key things that comes to mind, right? There are going to be announcements, innovations, and whatnot with upcoming events, but together we're able to leverage that to advance VMware Cloud on AWS. To Daniel's point, storage, for example, even with host offerings, and then even with decoupling storage from compute and memory, right? Now you have the flexibility where you can do all of that. So to look at it from the standpoint where now with 21 regions, where we have VMware Cloud on AWS available as well, where customers can utilize it as needed when needed, right? So it comes down to, you know, transformation will be there. Yes, there's going to be maybe where workloads have to be adapted, where they're utilizing certain AWS services, 
but you had that flexibility and option to do so. And I think with the continuing events, that's going to give us the options to even advance our own services together. Well, you guys are in the middle of it. You're in the trenches. You're making things happen. You've got a team of people working together. My final question is really more of a kind of a current situation, kind of future evolutionary um, thing that you haven't seen this before. I want to get both of your reaction to it. And we've been bringing this up in, in the open conversations on the cube is, in the old days, it's going back this generation, you had ecosystems. You had VMware had an ecosystem, AWS had an ecosystem. You know, we have a product, you have a product, biz dev deals happen, people sign relationships and they do business together and they, they sell each other's products or do some stuff. Now it's more about architecture because we're now in a distributed, large scale environment where the, the role of ecosystems are intertwining. And this, you guys are in the middle of two big ecosystems. You mentioned channel partners. You both have a lot of partners on both sides, they come together. So you have this now almost a three-dimensional or multi-dimensional ecosystem you know, interplay. What's your thoughts on this? And Because and, and, it's about the architecture. Integration is an, a value, not so much innovation is only, you got to do innovation, but when you do innovation, you got to integrate it, you got to connect it. So what is, how do you guys see this as, a, as an architectural thing? You start to see more technical business deals. So we are we are removing dependencies from individual uh, ecosystems and from individual vendors. So a customer no longer has to decide for one vendor and then it is a very expensive and uh, high effort uh, project to move away from that vendor, which ties customers even even closer to specific vendors. We are removing these obstacles. So with uh, VMware Cloud on AWS moving to the cloud, Firstly, it's, it's not a dead end. Uh, if you decide at one point in time because of latency requirements or uh, maybe some uh, compliance requirements, you need to move back into on-premise. You can do this. If you decide you want to stay with some of your services on-premise and just run a couple of dedicated services in the cloud, you can do this and you can uh, man manage it through a single pane of glass. That's quite important. So cloud is no longer a dead end. It's no longer a binary decision, whether it's on-premise or the cloud, it, it is the cloud. And the second thing is uh, you can choose the best of both worlds, right? If you're migrating virtual machines that have been running in your on-premise environment to VMware Cloud on AWS, by the way, in a very, very fast, cost-effective and safe way, uh, then you can enrich, later on, enrich these virtual machines with services that are offered by AWS, more than 200 different services, ranging from uh, object-based storage, load balancing, and so on. So uh, it's an endless uh, uh, endless possibility. We, we call that super cloud in, in, a, in a way that we'd be generically defining it where everyone's innovating, but yet there's some common services, but the differentiation comes from innovation where the lock-in is the value, not some spec. Right, Samir, this is going to, where cloud is right now. You guys are, are not commodity. Amazon's completely differentiating, but there's some commodity things happening. You got storage, you got compute, but then you got now advances in all areas, but partners innovate with you on their terms. Absolutely. And everybody wins. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I think one of the key things, you know, as Daniel mentioned before is where it, it, it's a cross education where there might be someone who's more proficient on the cloud side with AWS, maybe more proficient with the VMware technology. But then for partners, right, they bridge that gap as well where they come in and they might have a specific niche or expertise where their background, where they can help our customers go through that transformation. So then that comes down to, hey, maybe I don't know how to connect to the cloud. Maybe I don't know what the networking constructs are. Maybe I can leverage that partner. That's one aspect to go about it. Now, maybe you migrated that workload to VMware Cloud on AWS. Maybe you want to leverage any of the native AWS services or even just off the top, 200 plus AWS services, right? But it comes down to that skill set, right? So again, solutions architecture at the back of the, back of the day, end of the day, what it comes down to is being able to utilize the best of both worlds. That's what we're giving our customers at the end of the day. I mean, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a refactoring and innovation opportunity at all levels. I think now more than ever, you can take advantage of each other's ecosystems and partners yeah. and technologies and change how things get done with keeping the consistency. 
I mean, Daniel, you nailed that, right? I mean, you don't have to do anything. You can still run <laughs> vSphere the way you're working on it and now do yeah. new things. This is kind of a cultural shift. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if, if you look, um, not, every custo not every customer, not every organization has the resources to refactor and re-platform everything. And uh, we, gave, we give them a very simple and easy way to move workloads to the cloud, uh, simply run them. And at the same time, they can free up resources to develop new innovations and, and uh, grow their business. Awesome, Samir, thank you for coming on. Daniel, thank you for coming thank to you. Germany. Oktoberfest, I know it's evening over there. Your weekend's here and thank you for spending the time. Samir, final, give you the final word. Uh, AWS reInvent's coming up, preparing. We're going to have an exclusive with Adam, but Friar would do a curtain raise, do a little preview. Uh, what's coming down on your side with the relationship and what can we expect to hear about uh, what you got going on at reInvent this year, the big show? Yeah, so I think, you know, Daniel hit upon some of the key points, but what I will say is we do have, for example, specific sessions, both that VMware is driving and then also that AWS is driving. We do have even where we have what are called chalk talks. So I would say, and then even with workshops, right? So even with the customers, the attendees who are there and whatnot, if they're looking for to sit and listen to a session, yes, that's there. But if they want to be hands-on, that is also there too. So personally for me as an IT background, you know, been in the sysadmin world and whatnot, being hands-on, that's one of the key things that I personally am looking forward. But I think that's one of the key ways just to learn and get familiar with the technology. Yeah, reinvents an amazing show for the in-person. You guys nail it every year. We'll have three sets this year at theCUBE. It's becoming popular with more and more content. You guys got live streams going on, a lot of content, a lot of media. Um, so thanks, thanks for sharing that. Samir, Daniel, thank you for coming on on this part of the showcase episode of really the customer successes with VMware Cloud on AWS, really accelerating business transformation with AWS and VMware. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching.